It is likely that you found this video because you're trying to learn more about IDEs, or perhaps you're trying to decide which one is best for you. I'm here to help you with that. Hi, welcome to Automate Now. My name is Marco Cruz. Let's dive in. Okay, so in a previous video, I used a Swiss Army knife as an example to describe what a build tool is. I'm going to use it again to describe to you what an IDE is. IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. An IDE allows software engineers to perform many useful functions during the software development and software testing process. We know that with a Swiss Army knife, we could perform this type of actions. Similarly, with an IDE, you could perform these type of actions. Let's have a look at some examples. So let's say that I want to write a Java program, but I don't have an IDE. In order to write the program, I would have to get a text editor, for example, a notepad. Here I have notepad open. I'm going to begin to write my program here. I know that I need a class, so I'm going to call this class IDE demo. Open and close parentheses. Next, I need my main method. And all I want for this method to do is to bring some text that says, welcome to automate now. So let's do that by saying system out that print ln. And in parentheses, we write the text that we want to display. Okay, so now that I finished writing my Java program, I need to save this file using the class name. So for example, in this case will be IDE demo dot java so i went ahead and saved the file as you can see here now i need to compile this code what the compiler will do is that it's going to translate my program that i've written in java so that the computer can understand it and run it all right so in order to compile the program we need to navigate to the location where we save the file in my case i save it to the c drive and we're going to type java c c stands for compiling and then we specify the name of the class in our case it was ide demo that Java and then we hit enter and we can see that an error occurred when we try to compile Java colon 3 means that it happened on line 3 of our program and it's also showing us that a semicolon is expected and it's telling us where this semicolon is expected so before we can compile the program we need to fix it I went ahead and opened the file again and remember that it told us that it, the error was on line 3 so here's line 3 and it was at the end of the file so all we need to do is add a semicolon here and save this file again and we should be good to go. Here I am at the command prompt again and I'm going to try to compile the program one more time. Notice that when I hit enter I no longer get an error. That means that the program compiled successfully. If I want to run the program now all I need to do is type Java and then the name of the class and then hit enter. Notice all the steps that I had to take in order to get this program to run. First, I had to write it in a text editor and make sure that I was writing it correctly to avoid getting errors. And then I had to open up a command prompt to compile the program and then run it. Now let's take a look at how we would accomplish the same things using an IDE. This is the IntelliJ IDE. I'm going to show you how easy it is to use this IDE to write the same program. I already have a project that I have set up here. So I'm just gonna go to the project and right click on the package name and say new Java class and I'm going to give the class the same name that I used before. And then I'm going to hit enter. Let me get this out of the way here. Notice that as soon as I hit enter, the IDE is providing me with code that I can start working with. For example, I didn't have to type these keywords such as public and class. Also, the curly brace is already added there. So I can just start writing my code. I'm going to begin by writing my main method. And that's going to be a public method. I'm going to say public and then static. Notice that as soon as I start typing, it's providing me intelligent suggestions. In this case, I can just hit enter to accept the suggestion that it's giving me. And then I'm gonna say void main and string. This is an array. And then we're gonna call it args. The next thing I need is an open and close curly brace. As soon as I type the open curly brace, it automatically adds the closing one. I'm gonna hit enter. Then I can start typing the system output. So I'm gonna say system that out 
dot and as soon as I type dot it's already suggesting me the println method so I'm just gonna hit enter and notice what happens it automatically adds the method name and at the end it adds the semicolon so I don't need to remember that I need to add a semicolon at the end I'm just gonna type the text that I want printed out and there my program's done all I need to do now to execute this program is right click here and say run ID demo that main and when I hit that and we see this console window opened up and it printed the text that we wanted and there you go that's how easy it is to write your first Java program using an IDE and notice that the IDE took care of all the heavy work for us it compiled and executed the code without us having to go into the command prompt to do all those things and here we saw a few examples of how powerful these IDEs can be it automatically generated code for us when we first created the class and it also provided code completion by giving us suggestions as to what to type next. Let's see what else we can do here. Instead of writing all this out, system that out, that print line, we can simply type s out and hit enter. And notice what happens. It saves you from having to do a lot of typing. Let's say for example that we forgot this semicolon at the end here. I'm going to delete it and notice what happened. I get a red curly line indicating that there is an error here. If I move to the right here and put my mouse over this line here, I see a hint as to what the error could be. With many IDEs, you can also duplicate code easily. Within IntelliJ, you can simply hit Ctrl D and it will duplicate whatever line of code you're on. You can also add breakpoints by clicking on the sidebar. What this allows you to do is to debug your program. I went ahead and added some more print statements. And here we have a breakpoint. If I run this program again using debug mode here, the program is going to stop here. I'm going to take a look at the console by clicking here. And as you can see, it has printed welcome to automate now. And then it has printed the number one. Now it stopped at number two because I have a breakpoint. This is useful when you're trying to debug your program. If I want to continue execution, I can simply click this button and it will finish executing the rest of the program. The examples I've given you are simply scratching the surface of all the features that you can find within an IDE. Now, there are many different choices when it comes to selecting an IDE. The things to keep in mind is that some of these tools are open source while others are proprietary. Also, some are designed for a specific language. For example, IntelliJ has been designed for Java and PyCharm has been designed for Python. Eclipse, however, supports many languages. Thanks so much for joining me in learning about IDEs. Music